Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and today I'm talking about an important subject that does raise quite a few concerns for people depending on where you are in the world. And it's why I think that an Omicron lockdown is almost inevitable. It's a tough thing to say, it's not necessarily what people want to hear, but I'm a pragmatist and I'm looking carefully at what's happening and trying to integrate the science to try and explain what could be the cause of it. So what I'm going to be covering today is some basics about the virus and secretory IgA. And critically, I'm going to be sharing an important paper here that was just published on the 21st of August um, about Omicron infection following vaccination enhances a broad spectrum of immune responses dependent on infection history. Complex point, but this was a study, an excellent study done in Sheffield, the United Kingdom. They've done a great job here, a really important piece of work. And I am looking at it, I guess, in an objective way. It's a complex topic, so I'll try and break it down as simply as I can, even as I try and interpret all the bits of it. So you have to be patient with me as I try and put the pieces together. So before we go any further, I'd just like to remind everyone that coming up this Saturday and Sunday, two days of our conference, post-vax slash long COVID Congress, now, listen, this is an extremely important Congress, especially in the context of trying to understand what is happening with regards to the pandemic. And so we're bringing people from all across the world who will be coming together. These are scientists, these are researchers trying to find solutions, trying to understand where we are in the pandemic. The reality is that we are facing a situation where we don't have a clear plan B. Our plan A is what we have executed since 2021, and we can see where this is going now. We have a problem. But let's try and see if we can understand what is the problem, because it may give us some clues as to how we can approach trying to find solutions. So again, as I said, I'm focused on a few small bits about this research paper. So just a reminder again, this is the paper here done in Sheffield, published uh, on the 21st of August. So that's just a day ago. And um, essentially, I always check with regards to the support. This is um, a, a properly supported paper. There's no, no conflict of interests. And um, they've done good work here. It's not a huge study. And they've used participants from a number of different sites across the UK. Um, the main point is that they were looking at triple vaccinated healthcare workers, okay? And they were looking at these individuals and following them, looking at different immune responses to try and understand how this works in the context of the COVID infection. So before we go any further with it, I just want to remind you of a few basic principles. So again, we've got here a coronavirus. And the coronavirus here is the, this is this circular um, gray bit. And on the surface, these blue dots are the spike protein. This is a cross section of the coronavirus. This is the spike protein. What you have to notice as well is that stuck on the surface of this bubble of the virus are other proteins called the membrane protein. And then there's the envelope protein. And then there is inside of it a nucleocapsid protein. OK, the reason this is important is because in order to understand the kind of antibody responses, it's important to remember that vaccination purely did the spike protein. And so therefore, you would only expect spike, res um, um, spike specific responses after vaccination. In theory, you shouldn't see anything else. So this is the basics of the virus. The next thing that I want you to understand is how the immune system works. And I break it down into two parts here. Again, this is someone's head cut through, and we can see inside the upper airway. And this is where the infection will usually start in the uh, upper airway in the nasal passages. And then it will spread down into the lungs or outside to other people. 
this part, this lining, this mucosal lining is where we have mucosal immunity. Okay, it's a very important point. When people talk about immunity, they seem to think that it's the same as systemic immunity that's in the bloodstream through the lymph nodes and so on. No, there is another layer here, and that layer is called mucosal immunity. You can consider it like a skin inside the nostrils, um, and that's the first layer that the virus would have to penetrate in order to cause infection occurring in the rest of the body. So it can infect the cells in the nasal passages, but if you have adequate mucosal immunity, what will then happen is that the virus can't penetrate it. So it can only stay in the upper airway and not get into the bloodstream. And believe me, that's the most important thing that you have to achieve when it comes to the spike protein. Doesn't matter the source, you've got to prevent it from getting in the systemic immune system. So the other piece of the puzzle that I want you to understand is that about secretory IgA. So again, this is similar. This here represents the lining inside the, say, nostril. And these are the cells that help to produce mucus that forms a layer. And then these little red dots here, or red lines, represent secretory free secretory IgA, okay? Well, actually, the green represents the uh, IgA, and these are the secretory components which bind to it and help it to stay fixed in the mucus. So then this IgA that is produced in the lining and put in the mucus will then bind to antigens, or more specifically, in the context of COVID-19, it will bind to virus. So the combination of the mucus layer these antibodies that are binding to virus, this is how the mucosal immunity works. Plus, it has other layers inside the cells to prevent infection. So it's an extremely important and sophisticated immune system. That's the basics of what happens. So now with that in mind, I come back to the paper. So as I said, this paper um, here was produced in, the, in um, Sheffield. Again, they did a good paper looking at it. They were, again, looking at exactly how the immune system was responding to Omicron infection in people who had hybrid immunity or who were triple vaccinated, okay? They split them up into groups, those individuals who had previously been infected and those who had not, what they call infection-naive vaccinees. Now, these were all healthcare workers, okay? So it was a multi-site cohort of triple vaccinated healthcare workers in the United Kingdom. The first thing that you have to realize when you see that is that if they were healthcare workers on the front line, at that point, up to the point of vaccinations, it's a very low probability that they had not been exposed to virus. So that's a really important point. Why would they call them infection naive? It was because they didn't have any IgG antibodies in the systemic immune system, remember? So when they checked the blood for those infection naive people, there were no antibodies in here. And so the presumption was that they had not been exposed to virus. That's not necessarily true, because if they were exposed to virus and it could not penetrate the mucosal barrier, you then wouldn't get a response in the systemic immune system. There would be no IgG antibodies. Very important point. So in reality, were these healthcare workers actually infection naive. A very, very important point. And this is where I'm trying to see if I can clarify this point. And I'm going to show you this, um, this image again. This is now a breakdown of what they were look at, looking at. So they were looking at the IgA, remember the secretory IgA that we had, just a reminder as to what that looks like. That's in the mucus the secretory IgA is stuck in there and it's binding to antigen. 
So they were measuring the levels of it, and they were looking at specifically the spike-specific secretory IgA in the nasal passages. And you can see these little dots here. These are the SARS-CoV-2 naive. So it's black without a middle and then black with a middle is post pre-Omicron and post-Omicron. And then if they are red, they're previously infected. That means they had IgG antibodies and this was post-Omicron infection. So they were looking at the secretory or the IgA in the nasal passages. And you can see here, infection naive secretory IgA. Now they have been vaccinated with the spike protein. So you would expect to see some S proteins there. And you can see that after infection, it rises. There was not much difference in terms of the S protein with the previously infected Omicron, um, pre-Omicron group. And you can see again, a higher response. So that's important to understand. So just again, a reminder with regards to the virus, we are looking at the spike specific response in the mucus in the nasal passages. So this is where I'm going to take you to a very important piece of this research. What it shows here is when you go a little lower, they looked at the N-specific IgA. And again, a reminder, when they talk about the N-specific IgA, they're talking about the nucleocapsid protein. So this is not the spike protein. So this would only occur in infection, okay? Not in vaccination. So if you have N-specific IgA, it suggests previous infection. And this is what you can see here. So in this cohort here, they can see, even though it's a low number, all of the patients who apparently had not exposure did have N-specific secretory IgA, which would suggest to me that they were infected previously. They just didn't have symptoms and they didn't have an antibody response in the serum. That's a very, very important point. And so this is where we have to be very careful to try and understand exactly how the immune system is working and integrate these critical bits of information to try and work out, well, what does it mean? A scientific person, whatever their perspective, should be asking the question, if we have done over 13 billion vaccinations, why in the world is Omicron still circulating, especially in highly vaccinated regions? Is there something about the immune system that may have altered after vaccination that could be a contributor to this? Because scientific observer will realize if you look at countries that have low vaccination, certainly countries in Africa, Papua New Guinea, there is no circulation of Omicron. And this is because they have adequate natural mucosal immunity. The virus is struggling to penetrate. It's not that they can't get infection, but it doesn't seem to last and it doesn't get into the systemic immune system. So here is the bit that I want to leave you with, because you can look at the paper yourself, but I'm highlighting what I think is the problem. When you looked very carefully, at this is now a comparison of immune responses in the prior Omicron infection in vaccinated SARS-CoV-2 naive and previously infected individuals. In both groups now, and this is the point, they're looking at the neutralizing activity in plasma of these antibodies. And what they're finding is that actually, there are four groups they're testing here. Ancestral, which is meaning the Wuhan um, original virus. And I think that actually I need to make this bigger so that you can see this. Um, this is very important if I can make this bigger. So this is the neutralizing plasma here. So this here is ancestral. That means the original Wuhan virus. This is BA1, BA2, BA5. And when we look at the neutralizing activity in plasma, it is strongest in the context of the ancestral strain of the virus. It's weakest for BA5. 
This is what we had seen before in a study that was done similarly in London, looking at the, the response, the antibody response with regards to Omicron infection. And it seems, therefore, we've got a situation where the immune system is so primed towards the original variant of the virus that it can't seem to get out of it and therefore is struggling to be able to neutralize Omicron. This is fundamentally what makes the most logical sense to me because you can't have a situation where antibody levels are occurring. There are very high antibody levels after vaccination and even after vaccination and infection, but the virus is still circulating. It doesn't make any sense. The only way that it could make sense is if, for some reason, after vaccination, this immune system, the mucosal immune system, is so primed to targeting the spike protein and not the other proteins on the virus, and because the spike protein is changing with Omicron, it is unable to neutralize the Omicron variants and they cause infection. More critically, it may highlight that for people who had prior natural immunity, if they then become vaccinated, it can still lead to this kind of spike-specific immune response, struggling to neutralize the Omicron variants. That's a very serious situation, because what it would mean is that as the Omicron variants continue to roll out, there will be no ability for the population to close it down. And the lesson that I've learned with regards to SARS-CoV-2, the spike protein seems to be the problem. The way the spike protein interacts with the immune system inside the bloodstream, inside the lymph nodes, seems to drive most of the disease that we're seeing. That's why I would say when not if, it's my prediction, when we see the mortality starting to significantly rise, they are going to lock down. No matter if it's fair or not, I think that this is what they will, that it's the only response that they know at the moment because there is no plan B. That's the saddest part of this situation. Without a plan B, we are all stuck. What do we do? Again, as I close out, just reminding you all, the post-vax long COVID Congress, we have these experts from across the world who are thinking about exactly these points and trying to figure out solutions for it. Register at the link below. But I end with this important point that I say from time to time. I was worried about the pandemic in March 2020. I am more worried now about what we have to face. I hope that I'm wrong, but sadly, I can't see how we'll get out of this. Let's hope that we can find ways to mitigate it. Have a great evening.